Hello, I'm Graeme Steele, CEO and founder of CryptoSense, and here in the sixth of our series on key stores, I'm going to talk about the Bouncy Castle FIPS key store, BCFKS. So, as you know, if you've seen the other videos in the series, a key store is just a file that contains some cryptographic key materials, so certificates, private keys, maybe symmetric keys, and we want to protect the sensitive key values, and we're going to do that with some kind of encryption and integrity protection, and we're going to derive the keys from a credential or a password. So BC FKS was a key store that was designed for the FIPS approved uh, version of Bouncy Castle. Uh, and so as such, it uses uh, pretty modern cryptography uh, in terms of what's available in the NIST standards. So the way that we derive the key from the password is by PBKDF2, which is the only password based key derivation function that's currently uh, NIST approved. Uh, and we use the HMAC 512, SHA 512 uh, function to do that key derivation. So that's basically as, as good as you can get from that sort of standard uh, NIST suite. Um, you, 512 is important because that really raises the memory requirements for somebody trying to do um, brute force cracking on the password uh, later as opposed to using, say, uh, SHA 256. Uh, and just recently, you can also optionally use SHA 3 with a 512 bit um, output as well. So you've got pretty good options on the, the key derivation. Uh, so the key derivation iteration, so the number of times you apply that hash function, uh, is set to uh, 16,384. Uh, so that's kind of fine. It's uh, 10,000 iterations minimum in the NIST uh, standards these days. Um, and generally, NIST recommend that you trade off and you have as many iterations as you can without slowing down your application too much when it has to check passwords. Uh, but that gives you a sort of a reasonable uh, standard for that. Uh, and then the encryption is done uh, using uh, AES uh, with uh, CCM mode. So CCM mode is one of the combined authentication and encryption modes that uh, NIST uh, approves. Uh, some cryptographers don't like CCM mode compared to something like GCM mode. They don't like the security proof, for example, but it's uh, pretty widely used in a bunch of standards. Uh, and so we don't sort of see any immediate uh, problems with that. And finally, uh, in recent versions of Bouncy Castle FIPS, you can opt to use the Scrypt function to do your um, key derivation from the password. So Scrypt is quite nice because it has explicit parameters you can use to trade off memory and, and uh, computing time requirements. And so you can really dial that up to exactly what kind of um, adversary scenario you think is uh, realistic for your application and make that kind of settable, uh, which is quite nice. So conclusion is if you have to use a software based key store for your application and you're using Java in Bouncy Castle, Bouncy Castle FIPS key store is definitely your best option and you should look to move to that. If you have one of the legacy ones you might have seen our other videos about like PKS, uh, for example, uh, and that puts you in a reasonably good place. Um, but you also want to think about where you're going to put that credential that opens the password. So nice to keep that in something like a secret store, cloud secret store, something that makes sense. Uh, so it's not around uh, should an intruder manage to get access to the file system of your application. Okay, so that's all for our uh, key store series. Don't forget to subscribe to the CryptoSense channel to keep up to date uh, with all of our videos on cryptography news and little technical tips. Uh, otherwise, leave us a comment if you've got any more questions about key stores that I haven't answered, and I'll see you again soon here on the channel. Thank mm -hmm. you.